Here is my 60 gallon compressor that I will use in the new project. So far I used it with a simple regulator, single port and a valve. But recently I got this 300 feet tubing for compressed air. It is 3 quarter inside diameter tubing. Packs outside, aluminum core and PEX layer inside. The tubing came in a kit with four tubing couplers, half inch thread. Compression ring and compression nut. Two T's to connect tubing. Twenty five clips to run the tubing on the wall. And four aluminum blocks as terminals. Three eighths port with a plug. The valve to drain water. Half inch for the coupler. And quarter inch opening for the connector. I will not use those terminals in my installation and I will explain why later on. As the part of this project I will install this cooler to reduce water in the system. In the factory setup, the air goes from the compressor straight to the tank. In the new setup, the air will go from the compressor to the top port of the cooler. The cooler is rated at 250 psi working pressure. The air will pass 16 times back and forth. As the air will cool down, the moisture inside will go from vapor to liquid and will flow into such a filter. This filter is equipped with a valve that shuts close under pressure and opens as the pressure in the system drops. Water collected in the filter bowl will drain automatically, leaving the system for good. So when the compressor shuts off, the water drains automatically. Connections between compressor, cooler, filter, and tank will be done using this half inch copper tubing. Compression fittings on the filter. To increase the cooling effect, I will use this fan. Compressed air leaving the filter will go into the tank by this check valve. Water is not good in compressed air systems for two reasons. It can damage internals of air tools or spoil a paint job. And second, it can corrode the tank and cause explosion. The idea of draining air before it gets to the tank is not new. Especially old compressors used to have coolers. Modern compressors, not so many. I will start my project with hydro testing the tank. I will fill it with water, close all ports and apply pressure from a pressure washer. The testing will be done at 150% of the working pressure of this tank. It is specified to be 150 psi, so I will test it at 225 psi. Why do I test it with water? Water doesn't compress like gas. Compressed gas stores a lot of energy. Compressed water doesn't. If the tank is to let go at 225 psi, it will just spray some water, losing pressure fast. I will remove this check valve, fill the tank with water and plug it with this cap. 
In this port I will screw a pressure gauge to monitor the pressure inside. This regulator will be removed and I will screw a pressure washer connector onto the valve. If the test will be successful, I will change this outlet bushing from 3A to 3 quarter. But not this one. I need straight 2 inches thread. This one is 2 inches pipe thread. I am looking for the right one. Then I will put this 3 quarter elbow, followed by this 3 quarter valve and this union into this hose. From the hose it will go into a 3 quarter regulator and I will hold the pressure under 110-120 psi. The regulator will be connected to this 3 quarter T down to the half inch pipe and the valve to drain accumulated water and up to the tubing coupler. Even though the system is 3 quarter the thread on the coupler is half inch. As I already said, I will not use those aluminum ports because my terminals will have filters, regulators and lubricators. I will have three terminals in my garage, each with a pipe and valve to drain condensation. There will be a flexible tubing attached to drain water straight to the floor. Compressed air will go down from the blue tubing and will be pushed to the regulator with filter. Then it will pass to this T and a coupler. It will be set at an angle from the wall so it will not stick out too much. Then I will use this filter that can be used with a desiccant cartridge. This port will be used for painting. Now I will tell you more about this port here. I will use it for sandblasting cabinet, where I need not only the right pressure, but volume of the air as well. This coupler is bigger than the universal one. Here is the plug for this port and the universal plug. Even though both have the same thread, the opening in front is much different. Other two outlets will have the same section with pipe and valve, an air regulator with filter. This outlet with universal port will be used to inflate tires, blow dust or dry surface, it will be set at 35 to 40 degrees angle from the wall. Next, the lubricator and the outlet for tools. Stay tuned, I will document the whole process. Now you can ask what is the cost. I paid 150 Canadian dollars for the air kit. For all the brass fittings, I was shopping around for best prices and let me tell you, Amazon is the last place to buy. Local home improvement stores prices are all over the place. I went to different stores for different prices. I did not expect that this company would have such a great prices for bushings and nipples. And man, those nipples are hard. After all, I'm excited about this project. Those gas valves bought on sale for $1.97 each. Shop around. Come back to this channel for details on installation.